For this movie, we're going to run an actual dyno test. And before we do, I want to point out in the user manual, there is a very good section, section 4.1. And it's starting and running an actual dyno test. And a lot of tips in there. Just look at the pictures at least and get you some ideas of what's going on. On page 150 in that section 4.1, it gives you the basic six steps for running an inertia dyno test. Basically, power things up, get it running, the electronics. Here, get your engine started here. This is the engine graph of engine RPM. Get your engine running. And when you get ready to go, stabilize the engine RPM and the dyno wheel RPM at some point where the clutch is locked up. If you want good data, you want a clutch that locks up at a fairly low RPM. This is probably not the, the type of clutch you'll run in your actual cart or vehicle, but uh, it gives you better data if it locks up real solid at a low RPM. Get things spinning, everything spinning. At some time before you hit the throttle, press F1 to start recording data. Sometime after that, hit the throttle, accelerate up through the RPM range. When you get as high as you dare go, close the throttle, you'll start decelerating down. And some point after you start decelerating down, press the F2 key to say, I'm done recording data. So here we are back in our Datamite spec screen. And we've gone over this in other movies, but here's your dyno specs. We've got these set up to match your dyno. Your Datamite specs that describe your channels and weather station and stuff, those are set up. And what you also want to do is pull out a test in the library that's similar to the new test you're going to be running. That way you don't have to pipe in everything from scratch and change everything. Things like engine specs, which are mostly for information. But if you want to keep track of what this engine is, we've got a place for that. Test conditions. Uh, here's your weather data from the weather station. But other things that you might want to do, like correction factors. And we're not using this right now, but you could. You could fill that stuff in. So when you get ready to go, You'll click on Start Dyno Run, and here's our gauges screen, our current reading screen. And here you can see we're getting our engine and dyno wheel RPM, head temp and air, engine intake air temp. And you can see here we have our weather readings, correction factor and our weather readings. And that's pretty much all we're doing with this, uh, with this data mite. It's just recording a few things, not a lot of pressures and other things here. So anyway, we are locked up. Our clutch is locked up. We are spinning at, yeah, what is it, 680 dyno RPM and about 3,000 engine RPM. And what you do is you could click here on the F1 or just press the F1 key, which is what I normally like to do. It's starting to record, recording yes. And the F2 key would here stop recording. So we are ready to go. We are going to start doing our acceleration now. And you go as high as your RPM go. We kind of peaked it out. And then you close the throttle, bring it back down. And you see, I did not press F2. I can press F2 any point after that. I'll press it F2 now. And it asks you a question. Do you want to save this data set? If you say yes, it's not even going to go into the screen here. It's just going to use all the defaults, carry over everything from here to what it thinks you'd want to do. If you say no, you can still save the data set, which I'm going to do. But it gives you this screen here where you can make changes that you might want to make, like the name. Maybe you don't want that name. Maybe you want a different name. And you see the CFG on the end. That, that's uh, the config file extension. We always put that on there. But let's type something else in. And you see we did that. And maybe you want to pick a different operator. You can pick a, that operator that happened to be in there. Or you can enter a new operator. And let's say it's going to be Kevin. The reason we go through all that is to try and keep the operators, keep some structure to them. Um, so you can't just type in any old garbage you want. Engine number, you might want to assign an engine number, maybe not. Folder name, you could add a new name. It's going to default to my test, but maybe you want to add a new folder. Maybe this is going to be uh, maybe animal for animal breaks. That's the folder. Folder is a group 
of tests. And uh, you'll have several tests in there. Maybe they're going to be Briggs or Jerry 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 or something in a folder called Animal. This one here is there's three choices for your dyno. Measure torque and horsepower from Axel, or it could be dyno if you have an absorber RPM. Custom, where it's just garbage you just measure for time and just want to record some stuff. It's not a power run. It won't look like a power run. Or a coast down test. And we're doing measure torque and horsepower from Axel. This lets you see uh, what you want to carry over from the old test to the new test. Maybe you don't want these engine specs carried over. Maybe you want to look at the engine specs and see what they look like and say, yeah, maybe you do want to carry them. Maybe I don't. I'm going to carry them over. Test comments. Let's say I'm going to blank them out. I can start typing something in here. I guess I can't. i got to keep them in there and type them out and type them in like this. So I just type something in. So you can see how it works. And we've still got that data set. That is in the computer right now. And we're going to go get it with these new settings that I've made here. And it's telling you that it put a, a CFG on the end of the name. That's fine. It's got the data. Here's the data. And it gives you some idea what happened. It found one run in the data. And the time of this test, if there's more than one, these would be different, but they're all 4.3 seconds of the length of the test, which is kind of short, but I'm doing a kind of a fake test here. And you can see this power curve doesn't look very good because it's sort of a fake test I'm doing on the bench here. <clears throat> but what you could do now is you could take a look at that test and you can say, boy, that is funny. But here's the axle, and then it topped out, and finally it died here, or we killed it with the throttle. But it was up here peaking out at um, 3,000 dyno RPM. That's a nice little handy thing for quickly troubleshooting. We'll take a look over here at its conditions. Here's the weather that was recorded for this test, which produces this density altitude. Some people like looking at density altitude. Or what's more important, here is the correction factor for that. What that's saying is because this air was not as good as our race dyno conditions over here, 29, 92, and 60 degrees, it says I've got to bump the recorded data up 6%, multiply by 1.06, to get uh, corrected data for that standard day. And you can see here there's other specs here that are from the engine specs. And here's a summary. We're getting a peak torque at 93 foot-pounds at 8,000 and 146 horsepower at 10,000. And, and such. But some of this stuff is a little funny because this is a bench test. I've just fictitiously created this data. We have said before that uh, you can always make changes after the fact uh, for most anything in our, in our stuff, in our software. Well, let's go here and make a change. Let's say that this dyno wheel, it says it's got two magnets. Let's say that was a mistake, that it really only has one magnet. We had something wrong in there. We make that change. Shows one magnet here. We back out. Says, do you want to save it? Say yes. And it says it updated the data channels, channel two. And then it says, do you want to save it as the master? And let's say we say yes there. The master data line specs have been updated and saved. And look what happened. We have, I don't know if you remember, we had like 140 foot or horsepower on this thing. And now, with the new RPMs and stuff, we have changed the power of this thing because we found out we made a mistake. Now, like I said, this is a fictitious test, but it just illustrates how if you made a mistake, how you can fix things and, um, and fix problems after the fact.